Hi everybody, today we're going to talk a little bit about some of the rumors and varied information that I've been looking at with regard to the Notre Dame pipe organ. I really felt like I had to address this since my channel is all about organ stuff. But the fact is, I don't have any special or, or privileged information. I'm going to be going at this from the perspective of what if I got the call uh, to take care of an organ that had been through a fire. So we're going to do this just kind of generically uh, and without a lot of specifics, particularly to Notre Dame, but we're going to be talking about the kinds of things that the technicians there might be facing. First of all, if I get the call and they say, hey, our church burned down, the organ looks like it's okay, but we don't know for sure. My gut reaction is number one, do not turn it on and see if it still plays. This is why. Dust is the number one issue on dealing with potential problems after a fire or an earthquake, something of that nature. Dust that just accumulates on the organ is not a particular problem, but it does need to be cleaned up because it could potentially get kicked up and eventually get sucked in through the blower and so forth. My first instruction would be that. Don't turn it on. We've got to deal with the dust. So that comes in many forms. There's the dust that's already accumulated on the organ that's going to have to be cleaned up very carefully. There's also the dust in the rest of the building. Now, if the organ, let's say, could be sealed off so that no additional dust that gets kicked up through the rest of the cleanup gets into the organ, uh, then we could deal with the organ right away. On the other hand, if you can't seal off the organ and the cleanup and reconstruction is going to have to go on with the organ unsealed, then I'm going to have to say, well, then we're going to have to wait. Do all the rest of this stuff, do the organ last. And here's how we would approach that. We would go in and very carefully work our way from the outside into the depths of the organ. Now one of the misconceptions that seems to be going around is everybody looks at that grand facade, that casework with all the display pipes, and it looks just fine. There's no obvious warpage or heat damage or anything like that, but that really doesn't mean anything because the majority of the organ is inside behind all of that. Can't see what's going on there just yet. So if I showed up at a church, there's all this dust, so we assume we've created a situation where no more dust is going to accumulate on the organ, well that's where we're going to start. We're going to start carefully vacuuming and cleaning everything. We're going to work our way in. Uh, my gut instinct tells me each and every pipe needs to be thoroughly examined. So as we work our way in, we're going to take all the pipes out they're going to be cleaned, examined, any necessary repairs, might as well take care of them then. Then we get down to the mechanism of the organ, the wind chests, the wind regulators, the wind supply, all of that kind of stuff. All of that has to be very thoroughly inspected because even if there's no obvious heat damage, there might still be some. My guess would be, given the age of the Notre Dame organ, the wood is very stable, it would have to get extremely hot to have any real problems. But again, we're inside the organ, we're taking things apart, we're examining everything. If we see anything that needs to be fixed, then that's what's going to be done, and we're going to deal with that step by step. Now, several years ago here in Fresno, California, there was an organ that had an enormous amount of dust accumulation, and it was causing significant problems. There hadn't been a fire or anything uh, like that. But unfortunately, somebody had done some major remodel work inside the church and hadn't thought about protecting the organ into that condition. And so we had all this gypsum dust from drywall, sawdust, that kind of thing had accumulated, and it really needed to be cleaned up. On top of that, there was rat problem. The rats had chewed through stuff, uh, left droppings and urine all over everything. So it was a major cleanup job. And that's basically how we handled it. We worked our way from the outside in. We took every pipe out of the organ, 
cataloged them and stored them carefully. As we took them out to put them back in the organ, we cleaned each one, checked it out, made any repairs that were necessary. Uh, prior to that, of course, we had cleaned everything on the organ, looked inside, took things apart, put them back together, did any repairs along the way. Then and only then was it a responsible thing to turn it on and see how it works. Um, I hope that that kind of clarifies some of this. Um, you know, I think undoubtedly the Notre Dame organ is in good hands. And there was a report on the news where they went up and looked at it. And it looks like uh, there has been an absolute hands-off policy. It is just being left alone. The dust that has accumulated on it is just being left there undisturbed. They're dealing with the rest of the building. That looks to me like it's the right thing to do under the circumstances. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to this channel and make sure you hit that notification bell. There's a bunch of ways you can connect with me online. Please like and follow my Facebook artist page. It's Tony Imperatris at Tony I the Organ Guy. Also, you can subscribe to my website, TonyImperatris.com, and you can receive exclusive behind the scenes content that you will get nowhere else if you go over and sign up on my Patreon page. All of these links are in the video description. Thank you.